I want to say hello and welcome hey. to Conjurer Community. I'm here with uh, Steve Barcelona and Alexander Slimmer. And uh, Alex, what's up, buddy? Give me a oh, you need a mission record? on the sand. Oh, yes, sorry. please. Yeah, you got it. Here, let me just make you co-host. That way you can just do your jam. That work? Perfect. Really? All right, good. Perfect. Okay. Good. So, uh, so what are we going to do today, uh, Alex? Today, we're going to continue our journey into Paul Patassi, looking at the magic of uh, Paul Patassi. And those that were with us before, uh, for the first episode, you saw that this guy, he's a German magician, was a nightclub performer. And the video that we're looking at is clearly them. This is him documenting the work he did at an earlier time, right? Uh, an interesting note about Paul Patassi and uh, sort of, you know, pointing to why he's such a great magician, because all this magic that we want him is just bulletproof. But he was uh, <laughs> he was in the, the German army and uh, fighting, got captured by the Russians, had a gun to his head and from a Russian soldier. He reached into his pocket, he pulled out a deck of cards and he started entertaining this guy and he didn't shoot him and he became a prisoner <laughs> of war. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh man and while he's a prisoner of war he's in this this prison camp and glad he's doing magic right so he's doing magic for you know years to stay alive in this prison camp and eventually he escapes right? he come, goes back to germany and he just he becomes a, a world famous nightclub performer like you know literally all the magicians in the world know who paul patassi is of the of that generation and he's just one of the best that there was but i think that little uh razor edge that he was dancing on as a magician probably gave him some chops that none of us are ever going to have. <laughs> <It's my laughs> guess. Motivation. Wow. Motivation. Motivation. I, I, wasn't, so, I wasn't at the Paul yeah. Patassi show last. Uh, I wasn't uh, either. Yeah. And, and I watched it on our, you know, on our channel and it's great. This dude is fantastic. I He's really watch. like one of the best ever, man. One of the best ever, especially at this nightclub act thing where it's just him standing on a platform in front of people having dinner and drinks. It's really outstanding. So the stuff that we're watching today is going, it's more of it, right? You're going to see that every single one of these pieces is just a solid, solid, completely worked out routine. And it's uh, super fun. And again, I know I say this word often, but inspirational, you know, this is just, it's like, it's a bar that you can shoot for as a magician if you're trying to build strong magic. This is a, a great example. Okay, uh, we're gonna do, what's the name of the, is the name of the first one start with a P? Yes, it does. All right, here we go. And Beautiful. here it is. Can you see it? Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we come now to a special experiment. And for this special experiment, I have here a pencil especially very soft pencil, a pencil which easily can be erased, and an instrument. This is a money-holding instrument. <laughs> I would like to ask somebody from the audience, and I hope you can find, to lend me money. But a dollar bill, not one, not two, not five, but let's say minimum 20, 50 or a hundred dollars. Anybody has money here? Ah, you see? There is already a gentleman. Twenty dollars. Open it up, please. Before I got those twenty dollars, will you do me a favor? You see, all of them have somebody on the f face, yes? Yes. In the twenty dollars, we have Jackson. That's right. Yes? Yes. Would you put the rest of your money away? Thank you. And now let me know your name? Troy. Troy. Troy? Yes. With T. And the second name? Milligan. Milligan. So your initial initials would be TM. Correct. Is that correct? Yes. I'll give you here this pencil. And before we do anything with this bill, I ask you anywhere you want to initial the bill, perhaps beside his face. Okay. Huh? You just put your T and M on it. Good. Okay. Thank you very much. Put the money in the money holding instrument. <laughs> <laughs> May I ask you, madam, to help me for this experiment? Yes? Can you please stand up for a moment? And come to me. We have here a wonderful chair for you. Please sit down. May I know your name? Renee. Renee. 
<laughs> You're the third Rene I know I have seen here in uh, just a few days. Rene, we have here a dollar bill, twenty dollars, and we have here T M, the initials of the gentleman. Would you be so kind to hold this, please, in your right hand? Yes. And read to us aloud the number and the letters, there are letters, a number of this bill. You can find it here. Please start. A. A like in Albert. America. America, okay. L. L. Yes. Four, four, nine. Four, four, nine. Five, zero. Five, zero. Eight. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> uh, old man is not a uh, uh, fast train. Eight. Eight. Nine. Nine. Three. Three. K. K. Very good. Now, we need a controller. Will you be so kind, sir, and check if this is correct what they say? Correct. Yes, very good. Thank you very much. Then I will give to the lady in blonde here this paper. Okay, so I know at this point, I'm starting to feel like, boy, this better be good, right? I don't know what's going to happen yet. A lot, of, a lot of process. Yeah, yeah. Up to this better be good. All right, I bet, it, yeah. I bet it is. But let's let's see. Yes. Paper, you will be so kind and keep it. And you, madam, how do you write your name? Rene, with uh, two E's or with one E at the end? Two E's. Two E's. No accent. So, uh, no accent. No, I'm Italian. Ah, you're Italian. <laughs> Dunque, posso parlare italiano con voi? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Would you be so kind, please, and hold this in your right American hand. American Italian. And American now, Italian. I will you ask you, food. with your empty left hand, yes, with your empty left hand. You're one of those, aren't you, Steve? Oh, well, you know, yes, kind of, of course. I bet you have some phrases up your sleeve, come on. <laughs> to make the following movement. Watch it, please. A one, a two, a three. A one, a two, three. Beautiful. We put the plate on. <laughs> and the sword. Can I have now the $20 bill? Do you give it to me with pleasure? Sure. 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 It's not yours. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we go to 40 the ones. In the one third, second time, in the second third, about, 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 not 100%, but we are working only 99%. <laughs> it's a very interesting experiment. I made this about 500 times, 499 times it failed. <laughs> <laughs> you are laughing, he's not laughing. <laughs> we roll it up once more, <laughs> we roll it, and roll it, and roll it, okay, and soften it. <laughs> <laughs> Will you be so kind, please, and blow on this? Yes? We take here a handkerchief and put it here underneath the handkerchief, and you hold it with your right hand with two fingers, like this. Do you have it? Yes. Don't let it go. Turn it around, and tell the bill in same height with the salt. Very good. I have for you here two potatoes. Do you like potatoes? I have potatoes. You love potatoes. A bigger one, a smaller one. Madam, which of the two potatoes you like better? The big one. Ladies always like the big one better. We put see that one the time. other potato away, and the one you chose, you will put now here in a Paper cone, empty, mm -hmm. empty, yes. You will be so kind, please, and hold now the potato <laughs> with the left hand. Okay. <laughs> Twenty dollar here, potato there. Very good. Salt here. <laughs> we take now the twenty dollars and put them underneath the handkerchief, and you hold it like this the long way like in Tipperary. You have it? Yes. yes. A little more salt. <laughs> I will count until three. I give you here a small knife as well on this plate. 
I will count until three, and when I say three, you drop the $20. Huh? Not at one, not at two, Rene, at three. And you, sir, watch where it falls. One is still there. Still here. Loud voice, please. It's still here. Two is still there. It's still here. Three, drop. No way. Oh, it's not there. It's not here. Will you please hold this knife? Ladies and gentlemen, my hands are completely empty. You were holding the chosen potato all the time in your hand. May I have the paper cone? You take the potato out of the paper cone. Is it empty? Yes. A normal potato bought here on the grocery shop together with Mr. Falanga. <laughs> we take the potato, we cut it open. Hold it with your own hand. Take the dollar bill out with your own hand. Give me back the potato. I will have it hash, hash brown tomorrow morning. <laughs> will you be so kind? Please open up the dollar bill. Read to us aloud the number and you control, please. A L four four nine five zero eight nine three K. And the signature. T.M. There's no business like... <laughs> 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 it's the best music ever. Okay. Well. Cooler. Fuller. It's, it's a, a lot of process there, but Makes but I think look. you get so clean when it comes down to the effect at the end. All of that, all of that build up, all of that stuff you had to do to get there. It sort of makes sense because it's like once certain, it's like you're going downhill. The dominoes are falling. It's like and then this and then this and then this and then there. And ah, right. So you need all that process at the beginning to get there, so that you can go into that free fall at the end, so that they just you know. Magic. He's got a great point gonna, there. Magic. Will's that? got a great point there. No juicy lemon. You know, no. Clean you know, lemon. I used to think that that was a detriment to the trick, but now I think that's a plus to the trick. <laughs> Why? Right? Because it, what happens is at the end, it's so sopped in lemon juice, they generally don't want it. Right? So and I will, if I'm, if I give them a bill to do it with, I leave it out for everyone to touch and I'll switch it and give them, you know, if, if, if I do it with a bill. Because generally people don't have more. That's the problem with that trick nowadays. Yeah. No one carries money. But when it's covered in lemon juice and you have that thing sitting out until the end and people are leaving, everyone goes up and touches it and people pick it up and wow, it was really in there. <laughs> it like sells the trick a little bit more. You know what I mean? So I used to think that because, you know, doing the trick, ah, what a mess. You got to clean this stuff up. But the more I did the trick, the more I thought that that was just, you know, it's, it's a positive. You think it too, strengthens it. You know? Curious Absolutely too, like does. all you guys in chat land right now. I'm curious. Do you think the trick would have been better if he would have said, like at the moment when she was holding this here and she had the, the lemon over here, do you think if Paul would have said, all right, what's going to happen is you're going to let go and that bill is going to evaporate and it's going to fly across and it's going to go into the lemon. Do you think this tr trick would have been stronger if he would have explained the context of what was about to happen? Hmm. A couple of people have said no. Feels like you're, you're, you're feels like you're telling the story before the story happens. You know, you're eliminating that surprise because that's a pretty mysterious moment. What's happening? I'm holding this bill, and they, someone may may make the the connection. Right? We just wrote down all those serial numbers. We wrote on the bill, but magical thinking is going to get you there. Right? Normal laymen don't think like that, so I think it's going to be a surprise to them. And I think you it, it would almost like take a little bit of air out of the balloon you know what <laughs> i think is always end, nice you know I mean? exactly 
I think it's always nice if you don't have to say it, but if they connect the dots just a few moments before you get there. Right. Yeah. So I like, think that's what happens. You, that's you know what I mean? It's like, they that's go, really the second. most satisfying. No way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. That's it. When you do this, no trick, way I'm holding everything. No, it's not going to be there. No way. Right. It's that's that mo that's the perfect moment for these type of tricks. I think. That's a good point. That is a good point. They got to get there just a few seconds before. Yeah. Wow. Totally. I mean, that's, uh, you know, Bill and Bill and Lemon is a standard, but uh, I, I have never actually seen anyone do it with the potato. I've heard about it like that. I've heard it, but pretty fantastic. Yeah. Makes you want to go to the produce department. Right. <laughs> and be like, you know, it's definitely got a lot going for it. There's yeah. no doubt about it. I'm generally, a, you know, I'm usually a suit kind of guy, but this, you know, this is compelling. I might, uh, I might put this thing together and try this for the next time I'm doing any of the, uh, the bills to impossible locations, you know, cause it's, we just saw it. It's so strong. So did you guys notice too, that once, really he, love it. once he sliced the top off that and pulled that top off and he chunked it, I mean, she was holding that potato. So she, she literally, you know, right. there was nothing to. He took the thing out of it. She took the bill out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's, that's usually nice. one of the moments where in some methods, that's the that if, if there's a weak moment it's when you're pulling the money out of the bill sometimes you know and or the the, the money out of the the lemon at, at that moment you know sometimes that's the weak moment and this one just, here you take it show them tell them the number you see the signature dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah right i'm gonna have to All find right, that so music. we know we know paul patassi he's a man who does his classics and he does them well right he does them well so let's watch another one let's watch another classic let's watch it well, let's watch patassi do another classic what do you want to say about it alex anything this is very very classical presentation for a trick that we all know and love this is like one of the most classical presentations that you see for it but because of the way that it is it's like you get a couple extra beats a couple extra moments of, of mystery and it's uh wonderful it's wonderful The audience is always interested how tricks are done. And there's the magician's code that magicians do not explain tricks. Now for today, I have got a special permission that I will show you a small trick and explain to you how it is done. So you go to learn something. For this little trick, I have here a page out of a newspaper. It's a Swiss newspaper. Only watches and stock market news. No politics. <laughs> I take the paper and tear it up once in direction north south. I put one half on the other, I tear it up direction east west, and direction west east. We take another time the newspaper, we tear it up. We put all the pieces together, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times. And now comes the most important. What is it? Salt. <laughs> <laughs> we blow twice. And one, two, three, four, five, six, newspaper together again. That's, that's the trick. That's the trick. And now comes the explanation. Madam, if you are a little bit clever, you can do it tonight at home. Okay. If you have no other program. <laughs> she has. So ladies and gentlemen, for this little experiment, we do not need no one newspaper, we need two of them. Two newspapers, and they have to be exactly from the same edition. One newspaper we put down on the table, and the other one we have to fold up. In French, you say, il faut le plier. In Italian, piegare. In Espanol, doblar. And in German, fold up. Muss man zusammenfalten. <laughs> you fold up once in the middle. The second time, you fold up here in English, English, not in American English, in English, English, in the upper third. <laughs> once more in the lower third. <laughs> once more in the middle and once more in the middle. You make five foldings like I have made now. And now, very important, watch it, here on the corner must be a letter W. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm going to fold up once more and once more. We make a small pack like this one. This pack we have to hide. It's not so difficult. We take it, we put it in the right hand, we bend the fingers forward so we're able to hold it. Now, we take the other newspaper and show it. Right hand always like this, never like that. <laughs> <laughs> Once you tear this up, you put this on top of it, be very careful. <laughs> <laughs> Second time, uh, the whole newspaper in your right hand. Third time, uh, the whole newspaper behind the pieces. Now comes the most important mo movement. From your right hand, you take the whole newspaper, you put it on the back, and you fold the pieces together in front, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. It's no more so difficult because you have in one hand, in the front, the pieces on the back, the whole newspaper. You have to turn it. A little up. In the front, the whole newspaper, on the back, the pieces. Now, if you want, you can put a little salt, doesn't matter. <laughs> Open the newspaper once, a second time, and a third time, but be very careful. You're holding here the piece. <laughs> you must do it very fast. You take the piece over in your right hand, you show the newspaper. Right hand always like this, like that. But if you are a real, real good magician, blow on the pieces, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Now you haven't learned anything. <laughs> <laughs> Sucks when that's the only one you don't have to pay royalties on, huh? Yeah. <laughs> that's good, man. That was like that's a you know that same plot of that napkin, right? It's but it, with the newspaper. There's mm -hmm. a like corner Bob White napkin. has it. It's just a very classic, yeah. Right. That's just like the old school presentation of that corner restored type effect, where it's like a one more at the so, end, you get them one more time, right? Yeah. You lead them down the garden path and turn the hose on them. So what's the deal that's with it. the salt, <laughs> right? So that's a big Fred Caps thing. I always magic, remember Fred Caps. The magic wand, right? Because yeah. he uses it to cover things. He's using it as a gag. He's using it for everything. It's a magic it, wand. Yeah. It's just that it's his own magic wand. He gets a giggle every time, right? Well, when Caps <laughs> would good. do it, Caps used to do it with the cane, right? He'd reach in his pocket, he'd pull it out, you know, with the vanishing cane. He would always do that. I sure. think he did it some other times yeah. too. It's like, it, it's just interesting. It's like, they don't even try to justify it, I don't think, do they? No, because it's like almost like a joke. Does, in, in the last show, in the last show, uh, remember we saw in the lecture last night, Tony did the the silks jump from glass to glass, mm -hmm. the knots jump place to place. Flying knots. In the first episode, did on, on right. Paul does one with six bandanas. Uh, in the first episode, it's worth watching. And there he sort of introduces the salt shaker and mm -hmm. is using it for magic to happen. But I mean, even in the potato trick, you could see if you, you know, if you know the method of what's going on there, that salt shaker is covering a lot of the dirty work. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's got yeah, dual course. purpose. It's getting a laugh, but it's also oh, yeah. to make the deception happen. It's, it's a yeah. magic wand. It's perfect. It's a magic totally wand. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty, and, and as far as those sucker tricks go, like that's a that was a pretty good one. A lot, yeah. I'm yeah, put a, totally. curious. Put a put a one in chat if you've played around with one of those sucker torn and restored tricks before in your life. Let us know if you've played around with them. All right, good. Now put a two put a two in chat if you actually don't like that type of presentation or effect. Because I've, I've heard from some magicians that, you know, they're not fans of that sucker torn or restored because there's that sort of fake teach in there. Does that bother anybody at all? You know, it used when I was when I was first getting into magic, I really disliked that kind of thing. But now I see it as a device because he has that moment where it, it's a moment of him sort of breaking the character. Right. And he's like one of them. And I think that's a powerful thing to do in a show because the likability factor goes way up. You're in a place yeah. like, all right, now look, I, I don't usually do this kind of stuff, but I'll, you guys have been so cool. I'm going to let you in on this. Let me show you this. And throughout that whole presentation, you can see that he's trying to take the sting. Like it's a laugh. Everything is about the laugh. He's, he's taking the sting out of the whole sucker aspect of the thing so that by the time that comes back around, you're left with magic rather than this ick. Right. Because you could really easily go the wrong way on that and have them feel sort of icky and you feel icky about it, you know, and it's not 
we, we all, we all are in this together kind of thing. You can easily break that contract, I think, without, you know, too much effort, so to speak. So, uh, I think, I think it's really a cool device to me. It's like, uh, it's, it's like, uh, like the moment that the magician like whacks himself in the knee by accident. You go, Ooh, right. I'm just like you guys, you know, it's like, it's like, it's just a moment of, of resetting the playing field. We're all in this together. And I, I think that those are powerful devices, especially if you're doing like a full evening show, you know, more than, more than like 20 minutes of magic, a device like that's really going to just drive the likability up. Like I said before, it just, you know, I think it brings everything together in a nice way. Steve, did you ever have any tone and restored effects in your in your act? Or you know, you... I did a newspaper for a while. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's great. You know, I mean, it's it's definitely a good thing. You know me, I just you have to continually prepare it, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and I'm right, I'm right. like super lazy, you know. And sometimes <laughs> I don't want to do that. So that's how that lost its way. <laughs> I think that's. I've got to go buy newspapers again. So someone just commented. Part Rob, of the ritual. Rob, read Rob's <laughs> comment. He says that presentation just made me rethink how I feel about a sucker effect. Yeah, I think I think that's a good. That is a good example. Paul just Paul Patassi is a great example of a of of a really great way to handle it. I think. I mean, and it's, well, yeah. If I could just say, we're calling that a sucker trick, okay? But it's really not, and nobody feels bad right there, right? Like, but I would argue that that's because of Paul's skill, right? Because well, yeah, but it's also not on one particular. It's not on someone one else particular person. Sorry. I'm sorry, there's a delay, Alex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, usually, if an effect like that, if if someone that's less skilled at presentation and just social abilities are just sort of lower, if they pick up that trick, I think it's going to come across as smarmy and yeah. probably turn people off at the end, you know. But this guy's done it so many times. He understands what makes this trick tick that he, I think it's, it's a testament to him, you know, that he's able to take really, it's, it's what I said before. He takes the sting out of the sucker effect because the sucker effect really easily can make people hate magic and hate the, the performer without, without much effort, you know? And I, this, I think, again, I think this is like the rest of these things. The guy's done it a thousand times. He knows where those weak moments are. Cause I'm sure when he had the moment in there, where he was making someone feel bad or something, you know, the sucker effect was doing the sucker thing. I'm sure he felt that like a sting in his heart, you know, and mm -hmm. he just probably ironed those things out and made it so that it was about connection and getting to that end, getting that full mystery. And, you know, that that other thing restores and it's a sucker effect away from the sucker effect and makes it another mystery and makes it another beautiful piece of magic. And that, you know, again, I think that's just a testament to this guy, like, working this material over and over and over and finding all the kinks and ironing them out you know again super inspirational i love it you know because I, I you know I, i'm i'm totally who, who was it it was rob yeah i'm totally with you like this this makes you think sucker effects are a good thing you know when you see a guy like paul do this it makes you reconsider all of it totally right mm, is the red and white silk trick a sucker trick for y'all uh, no, I, I always simply classify a sucker trick as one where the magician explains so-called method to audience, and then method ends up not being the actual method. That's all. But I, I think I think Robert's if it's the one I'm thinking of, the red and white, like the silk trick that I did, where you you put in the red silk and or you put in the white silk, it comes out red, and it's coming out the both of those. There's a moment in there we say. Now, the way I did that was before I came out, I put the silk in my hand and, my, and I hid it in my hand, but you don't ever open your hand because you don't want them to see that it's there. And then the thing right. changes color and, you know, it, it does have a sucker element to it. But again, I think it's, you know, it's the same, same sort of thing. You have to play it real low key. Otherwise, you know, you're going to feel that sting. You're going to feel like you're, it's going to feel less like magic and more like you tricked them, <laughs> you know? And that's, I think that's the, that's the energy you want to get away from, from, from like, I tricked you and I'm better than you. Right. Cause that, that's like at the very primal level, I think that a sucker effect reduces itself to that. I fooled you and I'm better than you or haha. What, what was, mm -hmm. what's the thing from Johnny Carson that uh, uh, Seinfeld said, I put a coin in my hand, the coin's gone. Then you're a jerk right like mm -hmm. that's right that that's like what magic can easily be if you are not skillful at it and you don't consider how hard that hammer is hitting your spectators and and work with that so that you soften that blow 
and hopefully elevate it to mystery and magic rather than it just being a smack in the face, you know? But it's, it's a delicate thing. I mean, it's the reason you study all these different magicians is so you can see how these different folks attack this very problem so that they can just communicate, right? And be there with those spectators and have them be with them so that at the end, everyone's happy that they're at this party together rather than this adversarial, you know, you against me kind of thing, you know? And it's, it takes a lot of years working at magic and practicing different effects to like sort of understand those things. But it comes together. And again, watching a, a, all these great magicians like we do in this afternoon astonishments, to me, this is the way you learn those skills, right? You just learn by example and, you know, sometimes imitation and you just go out and get the stuff, stuff up on its feet and try to make it play. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. We've got one more Patassi stand up and this is the longest one I, I think I've seen yet. Right. And this one, this one he set up at the very beginning of the show. If you remember when he first starts the show in the very first episode, he has the thing with the bandanas, with the knots and so forth, and the, the jumping knots. Before he does that, he brings out an envelope, and that envelope is hanging from a string on a clip in the corner of the room as a prediction of things to come, right? So we're going to get to a place where we're dealing with that prediction, but it is... Um, a word test right we're reading thoughts here it's more into mentalism so there is process here but again i think it's like the the potato trick you'll see that all the process it makes sense but you need that process for the punchline to make sense in the way that it, it needs to for it to hit the way it does so uh so yeah this, enjoy buckle up this is a so good this one. is the finale this is paul's finale this is a, yeah yeah great okay here we go let's check out the finale madam would you be so kind and help me? Okay. Come closer. A question. Can you read without eyeglasses? Yes. 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 Can you stand up? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Come closer, please. And sit down here. Yes? Uh, we put it, excuse me, I want to move a little bit more to the center of the stage. Like this. All right. Very good. May I know your first name? Kenna. How do you write it? K E N N A. Easy. Yes. It's not, 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 even so, not even so complicated. No. <laughs> Kenna, this will be an experiment which has to do with books, okay. with words. That's why I ask you if you can read. Not only if you can read, but you can read without eyeglasses. I have here five books. Okay. Once, James Patterson, first to die. Sorry? Here, Sidney Sheldon, The Stars Shine Down, The Testament from John Grisham, Nora Roberts, Irish Hearts, and John Sowell, The Right Hand of the Evi Evil. evil. Okay. Which of the five books would you choose for this experiment? You choose any of the five books. Okay. This one, The Testament. We take the other four books away, Lita. I will need now a controller. I need now a controller. Just a moment, where can I find the controller? <laughs> gentlemen, not so many gentlemen here. Not so many gentlemen here. He, you were the one who signed the bill. You were the one already everybody involved. You were not involved yet. Would you be so kind, please? Come on stage and be the controller. Yes? Yes. <laughs> Very good. Stand behind the lady. Put your arms on the chair like this. And you, madam, mm -hmm. will open the book any page you want. Okay. Any page you want. Okay. Now, look at the number of the page on the left and the right side. Do you like the number of that page? Yes. You do? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. You don't want to change? No. No. Can I? Very good. You are our controller. Now, you are so kind. You hold, please, the book with your right hand. Le correct. Correct. Like this. Can you hold it open? You are so kind and bend forwards. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and look in the book only. <laughs> <laughs> I want you, sir, to tell me 
Should we use the left page of the book or should we use the right page of the book? The left page. The left page. He wants the left page. Should we use the upper half or the lower half? Lower half. Huh? Lower. Lower half. <laughs> Gentlemen prefer lower halves. <laughs> so, now, will you be so kind with your left hand? Make a fist. Point your finger forwards. Yes. <laughs> we break the, open the book a little bit more. Put your finger on top of the le lower half of the left page. And you will say now. Now. Not now. <laughs> You will say now when I tell you to say now, okay? When she's moving her finger across the page, you start at the lower half, yes. you move it up and down, and you go across like this in circles, okay. and then, are you starting to move? Please start moving anytime. Now. Did you stop with your finger? Mm -hmm. There where you stopped, is there a word or is there an empty space? There's a word. There's a word. Yes. Can you tell us this word? Ways. What? Ways. W-A-Y-S. W. A. Y. Y. S. S. Yes. Ways. Yes. Ah, there are many ways, yes? Yes. Ways. The word is ways. W-A-Y-S. Mr. Controller. Yes. You who well, was looking all the time in the book. Mostly. <laughs> Mostly. 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 Will you be so kind <laughs> and tell me if that word ways is really there? That is the word. That is the word. It is there. Yes. Now, just a moment. I want you to give me the book. Show me where the word is. Right there. Ways yes. here. Will you be so kind and have a look? Is the word ways really here? Yes, it is. It is. Okay. So, hold this. Okay. Ah. We put it in here. Okay. And now I have something special to show to you. I want to show it first to you. I have here an envelope in which I have cities, big cities of the world. You can see London, Paris, Bangkok, Mexico, Nairobi, Hong Kong, Moscow, New York, all type of cities of the world. And I will ask now somebody in the audience, who has a handbag? Oh, oh, now we are in problems. No handbag. You have a handbag, where? Ah, very good. Will you be so kind, open up your handbag. Can I ask you to reach in here and take out any page, any paper you want? Any paper, one only. You took one? one? Yes. Put it in your handbag. Okay. So out of 50 cities, about 45, 50, you took one and you closed it. Don't let anybody touch. <laughs> and now, a question. Are you still watching the envelope? Yes, I am. <laughs> Can I ask you to come down here? Okay. Oh my God. Sure, he can. Very good. He can. And will you take that envelope out from there, from that clip? You watched it all the time. Yes, I did. Okay. Now, will you please stand up? We have one, two. We need one more lady on stage. You, madam, you have the. Will you please come out of forward? Yes. Thank you very much. And stand beside me. You have the book? Yes. We put it down. Okay. Can I ask you to come here on my right side, sir? The lady beside on the left side, you make a mixed line. All right. Now, I ask you, is this envelope completely sold? Yes, uh, it sold, is. Uh, sealed. Yes, it sold. is. Sealed. It is sealed, yes? yes? It, is. it is an envelope which you watched all the time, yeah. and it is sealed. We go to tear this envelope open. You go to slit it open, and you are so kind, and take out what is in the envelope. 
A second a envelope. Second. Fantastic. <laughs> in one envelope, a second envelope, nothing here. Nothing in there. Okay. May I ask you now to tell us this is a different envelope than that one. This is a white one. This is an airmail envelope, yes. correct? Now, this airmail envelope is on the back. It has two seals of yes, United yes. States airmail. And what is written in the front? It says uh, yes. this envelope contains two predictions. This envelope contains two predictions. Now, it might be that I have done something special, and I will tell you what it was. This afternoon, I wrote on a white piece of paper something and on a blue piece of paper something. And what I wrote there, I folded up several times and put in there. Before I touch this envelope, I want you to hold it against the light and see if you can see there some shades in. Yes, you can. You can? Yes. Can you feel? Yes, you yes? can feel it as well. You can <laughs> feel it as well. Let her feel as well. Can you feel? Yes. 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 There are two messages in it. Okay. And you want to know what they are. Of course. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> we go to tear open the envelope. We go to slit it open. And now I want you to be so kind. Take the envelope. Take out the two papers which are in there. A white one and a blue one. Correct? Are there two? Yes. That was Nothing more? Nothing more. The blue one you give to the lady who chose the bird. The white one you will take and open up. And read to us, you have a good voice, with a loud voice, what is written on there. I predict that on June 24th, 2006, the chosen city will be Toronto. Could you be so kind and open up your bag and let us see what the card says? No. No. Toronto! Half, half of the prediction, half of the prediction is right. Now we come to the second half of the prediction. Will you be so kind? Come closer. Yes. Don't let me touch the paper. Open up the paper and read loud voice. I predict that on June 24th, 2006, the chosen word will be waves. Gosh. Somebody slapped me. That was good. Bam! That was good. It's satisfying in a lot of different ways, right? It's a, that's a good one, man. Because it doesn't have to be those two things. It could be anything, really. Yeah. That's like a system, right? Did yeah, that, exactly. did that guy, I, I love it. Did that get you guys' uh, juices flowing? Did that get your mind thinking is like it did mine out there in chat world? Huh? Did you guys did you guys get to thinking about uh, variations and ideas? Um, I don't know, Brian. Brian asked, uh, why did he bring up the last uh, person, the last lady? Why? Do you know? The only thing I can think of was that he could have a full shot on camera with four people filling the shot because he was trying to make sure the prediction was in the shot. But there's no reason for that lady to be there. She was just there like he wanted to have another person. I, I don't know. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the after show right now so we can talk a little bit more about that effect. Uh, we can't do it right here live streaming. But uh, if you want to um, join us in Conjure Community Club and learn about magic, you should. We are the world's best magic club. Thank you for joining us today. I'm going to stop streaming right now. We will see you next time. The rest of you guys who are here live in the club, stick around, please. <laughs>